All right. So I'm an aging life care professional or an aging life care manager. Um, in San Diego, we have about 30 um, care managers in practice. Um, across the nation, we have over a thousand. So we're a small but mighty group. Um, and when you find us, we'll, you'll see that we're typically social workers, nurses, gerontologists, or some other health or mental health professional. Um, we have OTs, PTs, people who have transitioned into um, our profession over time. Um, we have specialized training in the aging process, um, and we have experience in the field. Um, more than anything, we're a great resource for community options and community services um, within individual communities and, and other states, quite frankly. Lots of times we can point you um, where to start your search, which I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Um, and the thing about being part of the Aging Life Care Association and being an aging life care manager um, is that we follow a very strict code, code of ethics and a standard of practice. Um, to be an aging life care manager is actually a trademarked title. Um, and you can only use it if you are part of the association. And uh, you have to complete CEUs, many of which are in ethics, um, in order to make sure that we are abiding by the rules that govern our profession. Our hourly fees are anywhere from, a, in San Diego County anyway, um, anywhere from $150 to $300 an hour. The average is really around $175, $180. Um, and most care managers charge in six minute increments. So you don't have to um, purchase, you know, 10 hours or have 10 hours of service per week or anything like that. It is what you need when you need it. Um, so our main goal as care managers is to provide individuals and families with peace of mind, making sure that they have somebody available to them in those critical moments. Um, we do anything from help to manage medications to attend doctor's appointments to, um, you know, in our hurricane last year, the year before I was taping windows shut like we we really just are there to help where we're needed and make sure that our individuals have a go to person um, when something is happening. And then the other thing is to increase quality of life. One of the main things we do as care managers is ensure that individual wishes are followed out through the aging process um, and that people get to do what it is they'd like to do in you know their next chapter of life, whatever that looks like. Um, and as long as it's safe um, and appropriate, we are all we are there to advocate on that person's behalf. At Aging Focus, which is my company, our motto is to leave the client in a better place than when we arrived. So um, I'll give you an example of what I did this morning. I have a client who has a borrowed wheelchair, um, and it's one of the old Medicare wheelchairs, very uncomfortable, not the right size for her. Um, I actually this week brought over three different wheelchairs for her to test drive. And today I picked up the two that she didn't want and uh, went back over to the um, durable medical equipment company that we work with to pay for the one that she selected. So now she is riding around in style, but more importantly, in comfort. So she was left in a better place than when I arrived with her this morning. Um, so what do we do? Um, we do a lot of things. We provide professional support. We monitor our clients and we coordinate care. So one of the main things it, we start off with is we come in and we assess the situation. We look at an individual's living situation, and then we develop a plan to help them reach whatever the goals. I call them red flag issues. Um, we'll come in and see what's happening um, at their home or wherever they live at the time, and then help to determine what needs, what are, what are, what is the priority of things that need to be taken care of in order to uh, provide that peace of mind and quality of life and keep them safe. Um, and in that plan, we would link them to services. We'd mediate any co family conflicts or help families understand why we're making recommendations, what's happening. And I think the main thing as professionals is we're there for any crises that occur 
either during the planning process or after, but really once care managers are in place, we are actually crisis preventers because we're making sure that um, that person's needs are taken care of. And then once we have a plan in place and we're moving along, you know, we monitor things to make sure that everything is running smoothly. You know, I can't, you know, we all know life is fluid. Things happen. People fall. People get infections. You know, family members show up unexpectedly. Um, you know, last year, I think it was last year, we had, you know, scripts, uh, HMO plan decided they weren't going to be in operation anymore. And we had lots of seniors flooding, you know, the insurance market trying to find uh, new new plans and new doctors. And so care, those of us whose clients were in that situation, we helped them to find the right Medicare plan for them. And then also, but more importantly, get them to their doctors or find plans that kept their existing doctors. So, you know, in that situation, yes, a crisis presented itself, but we helped to make it uh, work better for them and and become a real a real issue. Um, so we identify what these changes are. We make adjustments. Um, we keep anyone in that person's life sphere who we're allowed to talk to informed of what's going on. Um, I have a client right now that every two weeks, um, with his permission, of course. I give his kids a rundown on what's going on with him. You know, how's he doing? How's are his different treatments working for him? What is his doctor's what doctor's appointments have we um, made during that two week time? And what were the outcomes? So it gives them because both of them live out of state, you know, peace of mind that their father's being taken care of and that someone is following through on um, his care. Um, and it's just, you know, ongoing evaluation and change. Um, and so again, we coordinate what's needed for that person, communicate, advocate, and help when problems arise. But I think one of the biggest parts of our jobs is to serve as an advocate and an educator. And that's to the person itself, because we are a person-centered, driven um, profession and service. Um, so the client is always at the center, then their family support system, the medical community, um, and their legal and financial community. And so we're advocating on that person's behalf, um, and we're keeping everybody informed of what is going on with that individual and educating them about where they are um, in their process. So um, I work a lot with people with dementia, and I um, often find that spouses especially have a really difficult time adjusting to some of the changes that their spouse with dementia is having because it's not the person that, you know, they've known and lived with for many years. And I always say to them, this is your first go round, you know, dealing with someone with dementia. I've done this many times. So let me help you understand what the process is. And so it's educating that while well spouse, it's educating the family members around that person. Um, it's helping them to understand that it's the disease and not the individual. Um, and so we're doing a lot of support um, with the system around that individual. So we're essentially advocating and educating anyone who is in the in the person's sphere. These are our eight areas of knowledge and expertise. So um, I always like to point out on here that there's legal and financial in this list. We are not legal experts. We are not financial experts, but we know who to refer to an individual to who maybe needs to develop an advanced health care directive or is having issues with um, undue influence or abuse or anything like that. This week, one of my clients, unfortunately, fell for a scam, um, which was texts coming to her phone saying that she won the sweepstakes and she was um, being asked to mail a check for $87,000 to pay for the taxes in order to receive her $2 million that she had supposedly won. Luckily, 
Um, her spouse alerted me to the situation immediately. And so I was able to get there, um, take screenshots of the numbers that were coming through, report those to um, the district attorney's office so that they could do what they need to do with it and then block all of those numbers for her from her phone. Um, and then uh, contact her financial institutions and say, do not let any money go out of these accounts and let's make sure that she's safe and we're not having, she's not to write any big checks without, you know, spouse approval or, or anything else going on. So those are some of the things that we jump in and take care of right away. So again, I'm not a legal expert. I'm not a financial expert, but I know how to jump in and get a situation taken care of, either stopped or moved in the right direction. Um, we, with the rest of these uh, areas of expertise, um, we definitely know a lot. We know the local resources, we know, you know, the doctors in the area, the care, caregiving services in the area, um, you know, adult day care services, um, dog walkers, you name it, we can find it um, that somebody might need. Um, we also work well with the families, like I've said, and then we know the housing options. We know what it takes for somebody to stay at home and age in place, what that cost looks like, what things need to be put into place in the home for safety, um, all the way up through placement, whether that's independent living, assisted living, memory care, um, and skilled nursing. So we keep a pulse on, you know, who's doing great work, who's doing great care, what are the costs, um, and then help to match the person to the right housing um, situation when and if that arises. Um, and again, I've talked about advocacy and crisis intervention already. And then just health and disability, knowing what to do in different situations. Um, I interestingly had a new client recently um, who's moving here from Arizona. And his brother is really concerned that his brother now has long hair and just won't refuses to cut it. And so I had to help that brother understand that his his older brother is not living his mind is not living at age 80 it is living at age 20 when he had long hair and rode a motorcycle and so this is the look that he has now because that is where he is in his journey and we just have to embrace it and work with it so um again helping families and helping people figure out where they are um in their journey that's what our goal is um so when do you hire a care manager uh, in any of these situations? So there's memory loss, there's someone who's refusing help but really needs it. Um, a family member needs an advocate or someone to assist them navigate the new, a new health plan, a new doctor's office, a new diagnosis, um, anything that's going on with them. Um, someone's confused about their options, they're in a crisis, or there's family conflict. And one thing to know about our services is um, you can be with us for the long run, or you can be with us um, just to get through a initial care plan or resolve an issue and then terminate your services. Um, I've had cases that were one month um, and I've had cases that were 11 years. Um, and when I say cases, I mean, those are people, but I just call it cases because there's lots of things going on and people aren't, aren't cases, obviously they're people. And so that's why we're care managers, but I've worked with people for a variety. I'd say the average on my, um, of my clients are about at this point, five years that I work with people, but, um, cause I've had a few that I've had, you know, for, for, eight, nine, 10, and longest was 11 years thus far. Um, so again, other things to consider when hiring an uh, aging life care manager is your your concerns go beyond your expe expertise and your ability to help. You just need information about community services. You don't know where to go. Um, you have little or no local support, or maybe your family is here locally, but they aren't able to assist as much as needed, or you don't want them to assist as much as needed. Um, you feel that you 
are keep falling through the cracks. Maybe, you know, you're not getting the PT orders that you need um, to get healthier or your prescriptions aren't um, being renewed timely or, you know, just for some reason you're just not getting the care that you need from whether a healthcare provider or um, a community. One of the families that I started working with during the pandemic had just moved here from another state. And so they never got a chance to really acclimate socially um, with their new community. And that was something that they felt they needed assistance with because they felt that they kind of got forgotten because the pandemic took over and they were never able to really um, adjust. And so I helped them to navigate their the community that they live in and get settled in. And I had a wonderful experience coming off the ele elevator and seeing the wife, you know, in a sewing circle, um, having made some new friends and really starting to enjoy where she has come to retire. Um, so that sort of thing is, 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 it's fun for me to see, see that happen for us to make those transitions. Um, and sometimes families just need an unbiased or objective, uh, opinion on something, you know, you know, we have siblings who maybe want to keep a family member at home and the other things that placement is the right option. And so having us come in and give the pros and cons of each and really painting a picture of what those two options look like might help the family to decide one way or the other what is best for um, their parent. Um, that's again, if you're, you know, that goes along with disagreeing with the steps. Um, and then caregiver fatigue, if you are caring for somebody who um, has a serious illness, um, caregiver fatigue is real. Um, and we always worry about the well caregiver and when their breaking point is, and then they become as sick or more sick than the person that's that's the care recipient at the time and so helping that person to feel less overwhelmed helping that person to understand um, what is going on with their loved one and helping that person to find respite um, is really important and so if you're in that situation sometimes consulting with the care manager or care professional aging care life professional will help you to um, find some balance. Um, and then again, uh, if, if families need oversight for existing care, maybe you already have a team in place, but things aren't working as smoothly as you need them to, we can come in and help. And then again, of course, anytime there's abuse, neglect, or any exploitation that's occurring, care managers are a really good way um, to have somebody else be the rule um uh, enforcer in those situations to make sure that people are acting within the boundaries that they're supposed to. Of course, we're always wanting to um, balance between safety and autonomy. Um, we want people to be safe, to not be doing things that could cause them to injure themselves or become sick. Um, but we also want to respect people's autonomy and choices um, for their life and 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 with that comes balancing what I always call quantity versus quality. So we might, um, <laughs> I was at a care plan meeting this last week and um, we recommended that, you know, if the client wanted to have ice cream for breakfast, let him um, because we need him to take his medication and he's lost too much weight. And so right now we need calories um, versus nutrition and so he's as excited as can be because he loves ice cream um and again maybe once he gets healthier and stronger and he's put on a little bit of weight again and we got the medication settled we might start to say not as much ice cream or no ice cream for breakfast anymore we are now you know in a safe place with your weight where we can um put some more regulations on there but you can still have ice cream once in a while so that's kind of a silly example but we really are always trying to balance between that and looking what looking at what the current situation is that someone um, is experiencing and knowing how to adjust accordingly. Um, and now I want to stop sharing my this screen and show you guys how to actually find. Except for everything is can't see where this is. Um, 
I'm trying to move the screen so I could, there it is. Okay. Um, so this is the Aging Life Care Association website. Um, can you guys all see that? I can't see anyone's faces. So if someone has their mic off. Or on, I'm sorry. I can see. Okay, great. So this is the um, the website. And this orange tool right here that says find an aging life care manager is a really great tool because what you can do is go in here and with a simple zip code. Um, I'll just put this one in at find. Um, it will come up with care managers in your community. So there's me. Um, I come up first in any San Diego search, uh, mainly because of my experience in the Aging Life Care Association and my designation as a fellow of the Leadership Academy. Um, but here are other people in the area. So Susan DeWitt is one of um, our competitors, but a very, very capable and wonderful care manager here in San Diego. Same with Sarah Noodle, Tamara Atworth, Atwood, I'm sorry. And so you can just go on. Some people have pictures, some don't. Um, and so you can see who all your options are, see what their their membership level is, see how long they've been part of the Aging Life Care Association, and then even link onto their websites um, to learn more about them um, or their company. There's Janae Quintana. She actually works for me. Um, the other nice thing about this is you can, let's see if I can get to the advanced really quick. If you don't know your zip code or where you're looking, but let's say you have a family member in Chicago, you go to advanced search, type in Chicago, find. I'm not seeing your uh, not website. Seeing this? Okay. I'm just seeing the website itself. Okay. Uh, then I did not share appropriately. Thank you for letting me know. Um, is that better? Do you see where I wrote Chicago here? Yes, that's better. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, hit find. And this is going to list all the folks in the sh actual where uh, Chicago is their um, city of of practice. Um, so this is the best way to find a care manager wherever you're looking. And the reason I show a couple of out of state or out of San Diego areas is because um, we all have families that live in different locations. And we might be tasked at some point to help, you know, a parent, a sister, a brother, um, a niece, nephew, whomever it is, look for assistance where our family member lives. Um, the nice thing about this website, too, is it also gives some more information about what you need to know. Some of the slides in my presentation you'll find came from here, how to select a care manager, how to work with a care manager, um and then how to find somebody what are and uh here you can see what our professional conduct and certification information or requirements are so this this website has a lot of information about who we are and how um we operate so again just the green button once you get into the website and you can do it by zip code if you know it Nine two zero three seven, I think, is the La Jolla one. And since you guys didn't see this before, um, different care managers in the area. So these are the San Diego folks. Um, I will say that the majority of care managers are women. Probably about ninety percent of them are, and it's not because we don't like our male counterparts. We are constantly encouraging men to become care managers and join our association. But I think because we um, tend to come from nursing and social work backgrounds, um, we just have more women than men um, in our profession. Um, so let me unshare. 
that and go back to the presentation. All right, um, so choosing a live care professional for you, um, I and this is a little bit of bias on my part, I think it is really important that they are an Aging Life Care Association member. Um, and that's mainly because you will then know that they are following a standard of practice, um, but you also will know that they have a network of support. So I, if I'm stuck in a situation, I don't know what to do, with the client or I don't have a resource, I can call any of my colleagues and say, hey, do you have an idea of how I can address this issue? Or do you know of a great you know, respiratory therapist that um, will do house calls? Do you know of this? Or just even to say like, I'm stuck, help me. And so it's a really, the, our association is, it works really well together. We all work very well together even though we may, you know, be competitors as far as business is concerned. We, we always put clients first and really try to work together as much as possible. We are certified, um, cer certified at different levels. Um, we have years of experience. We're responsive. We're licensed. We follow all the rules um, that are necessary within our own individual professions, meaning social work versus nursing, but then also um, as aging life care professionals. Um, we're knowledgeable about the local area. Um, we all provide a little bit of different services, but care management is um, the main one. And then um, also, you know, asking about fees and knowing what, what people charge um, is important when you're searching for somebody. Um, I think also I want to talk about this responsiveness part. Some some aging life care managers um, keep, you know, usual work hours and may have others have usual work hours, but may have on call staff that rotates. And then some care managers are just always on call. So knowing what someone's response time to you is important because emergencies don't always happen between eight and five o'clock Monday through Friday. They tend to happen on Friday at 430 or three o'clock in the morning. So knowing that you can get a hold of your care manager is really important. Okay. Why is my there we go. Um, and then here are four of the certifications that aging life care professionals um, often have in conjunction with their um, professional uh, degree. So a CMC is a uh, care manager certified, CCM is a, is a uh, certified case manager, and then uh, an a, 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 a SWCM is a social worker case certified social worker case manager, and then ASWCM. I am not sure what that is because I don't have that, but I'm sure I could look it up or if there's any social workers on this call, you may know what it is. But having these additional certifications not only shows you that we have the education required to be a care manager, but we also are working on continuing education requirements to keep any of these, any or all of these um, credentials up to date. So for example, I have the CMC and the CCM and I am required for those to have 20 additional, on average, 20 additional um, CEUs per year to keep that those up to date. So aside from my practice, I'm always looking for courses to take. Um, and with those two certifications as well, we're also required to have a certain number in um, in ethics. Um, so that is the presentation itself. 